Okay, so welcome everyone to the One World Mind Seminar this week. Uh, so today it's my great pleasure to have a uh, Professor Jianhong Tai today. And Professor Tai obtained his PhD from uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong in 2009 and is currently a professor in the Department of Mathematics, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Uh, professor Tai is an expert in design and analysis of efficient algorithms for real world problems, such as data analysis, uh, signal and image processing, machine learning, uh, using tools from like uh, computational harmonic analysis, approximation theory, numerical linear algebra optimization and probability. And Professor Tsai has published over 60 papers and also a few book chapters. And uh, some of the works that quite uh, influenced my research as well. Uh, so today uh, he will talk about the landscape analysis of non-convex optimization in phase retrieval. So now the stage is yours, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Suyang, for the introduction and the invitation. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about something on landscape of uh, non-convex optimizations in phase retrieval. So this is a uh, joint work with uh, people uh, from HKUST or HKUST alumni. Um, So, so the, the, the main theme is on non-convex optimization. Now we know that uh, non-convex optimizations are, becomes more and more important. Actually, they are powerful tools for solving many uh, problems like uh, from the very beginning, like the sing single value decomposition, actually it is solved by power iteration. It is a kind of non-convex optimization. And of course, in deep neural network training, we just use uh, uh, non-convex optimization. And there are many, many uh, problems we use uh, uh, non-convex optimization. So for, 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 non for some non-convex optimizations, simple algorithms like the gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent or alternating minimization often provide a good solution efficiently and effectively uh, despite possible non-optimal critical points. So to explain this, uh, the landscape of uh, non-convex optimization may be examined. Uh, so, so in the following, I just give you a very, very simple example, which is about the single value decomposition, the top single vector. So assume we have a matrix A and we want to compute its uh, largest uh, single, single value and the corresponding single vectors. So then it is well known that uh, we can we can reformulate this problem into an optimization, a constrained optimization. Uh, and then people just use power iteration to, to, to find out U1 and the V1. Uh, so it turns out that uh, the power iteration just uh, find, always find the U1 and the, find the U1 and the V1 almost surely if, it, if they are randomly initialized. Why this is uh, true? It is just because this minimization actually has a good landscape. If you check the critical points of this minimization, you will find that uh, all critical points are actually just uh, these uh, single vector pairs. And uh, among them, only the, uh, this, uh, this U1, V1 is a local minimizer, and which is also the global minimizer. And all the others are just the saddle points or maximizers. So that's the reason why this uh, uh, singular value problem, this U1, V1 problem can be solved, uh, um, can be solved by, by many uh, e efficient algorithms like the power iteration. Okay. So, so actually any algorithm finding a local minimum will be, a will be able to give the, the global minimum that is the U1 and the V1. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, present a more complicated example in signal processing the phase retrieval problem uh, through a uh, non-convex optimization and its uh, landscape analysis. Here is the outline. So first I give the uh, brief introduction to the phase retrieval problem and then the landscape of uh, several different models and then the conclusion. So the phase retrieval problem uh, so I, here I consider a generalized phase retrieval problem. Uh, just that we have a vector, we have a vector X and uh, we, we, we measure it through linear measurement, but, um, but uh, in, in some, uh, due to some physical limitation, 
we cannot uh, get the phase of the of the linear measurement. We can only get a phaseless measurement. That is, we have this. Uh, uh, we have only the the absolute value squared of this uh, of this inner product. So so now we know AR and we know why are we want to solve X. This is the problem. And the matrix form, if we just write this uh, matrix A in this form, then it is just the, the AX and uh, uh, absolute value squared equals to Y. So, so in other words, we, we in phase retrieval problem, we want to solve M quadratic equations with N unknowns. So this problem uh, uh, has, uh, has many applications in, in many uh, imaging techniques. Uh, so in the following, I just uh, show one picture of this uh, diffraction image. So here, of course, now this, uh, this uh, A, it's, uh, it's related to the Fourier transform. So that's why we call it the phase retrieval. Basically, we have, the, we have, the, uh, we have only the magnitude of, of, phase retrieval, of, of Fourier transform. We want to recover the phase. But here we consider this generalized phase retrieval model. Uh, so, uh, so to solve this problem, of course, we needed to go to first consider the solvability of the phase retrieval problem. Right? So obviously the, the phase retrieval problem cannot have a unique solution because uh, if Z is a solution, we just multiply Z by a constant C where C has uh, absolute value one, then this CZ is still a solution of the phase retrieval problem. So then, uh, the, uh, uh, so then we, we may ask uh, when the phase retrieval has a unique solution up to this, uh, up to this global phase. Uh, this, this problem, uh, this question actually has been answered by many, many authors. So here I just uh, cite one result uh, by Professor Wang Yang and Xu Zhi Chang. Uh, they, they, they proved that in the real case, uh, 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 if, uh, if this M is larger than two and minus one, then the phase retrieval has a unique solution up to a global phase almost surely for all A. And the M should be larger than four and minus four in the complex case. So the, the message here is that uh, uh, the, the, the number of equations is only uh, uh, linear to this end is enough for, for, for a unique solution of the phase retrieval problem. Uh, even, uh, even, the, even when the phase retrieval problem has a unique solution, actually find out this solution is not easy. So here is, a, is an example of an extremely uh, difficult phase retrieval problem. That is the, the stone problem. So we, we want to separate n stones into two groups with equal widths. Then we just uh, let uh, that this x to be plus or minus one, right? Plus one means in group one, minus one means in group two. Um, then since, uh, uh, so, so since each, uh, this, uh, each entry of this x vector is just one. So this ei star x has an absolute value one. So we have n equations, and also we want the uh, the the two groups has the equal weights, so that this uh, net this w to be the vector of uh, of weights of the diff of the stones. So this w transpose x obviously should be zero. So then we have n um, plus one uh, quadratic equations to solve. Actually, this problem is uh, is a well known NP hard problem in computer science. So so this shows that. Uh, the solvent phase retrieval is not easy. Uh, therefore, for simplicity in the rest of this talk, we restrict the, the discussion that uh, all vectors are just real and, uh, and the all uh, these uh, this, uh, uh, AI vectors, the A matrix is just a random Gaussian matrix. Though some results uh, can be extended to complex case, we, 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 we assume these all vectors are real. Uh, let's see how to solve this phase retrieval problem. Uh, uh, we may just uh, solve this uh, square, uh, this uh, equation. This uh, we call them intensity equation directly, uh, because uh, uh, because that's the intensity uh, received in the in the real imaging system. We just get this uh, uh, norm square uh, absolute value squared, and uh, 
to solve this uh, uh, set, the set of quadratic equation, so actually we, we can have the convex solvers. The, the idea in the convex solvers is that uh, uh, we, 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 it is very difficult to, to deal with the quadratic equation. Then we, how about we transform the quadratic equations into linear equations on, the, on this uh, rank one matrix X, X star. Then we have M uh, linear equations on this uh, rank one matrix uh, but uh, as we as we have said, this m you you can you can you 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 may think that this m is just the uh, order of n, right? So then we have now this uh, unknown here is a matrix. We have uh, n by uh, we have n by we have n square unknowns, right? But we have only roughly order of n uh, equations, so that uh, we have an underdetermined linear system to solve. Um, but uh, now the, the solution of this uh, of this linear system is is rank one, right? So then we just need to find a rank one solution to this system of linear equations. Then uh, we know that nowadays the convex low rank matrix recovery techniques are quite mature, so they can be applied to 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 solve this to find a rank one solution of this uh, of this uh, um, system of linear equation. So in particular, we just minimize the the, the nuclear norm of this uh, of this uh, uh, matrix and subject to this constraint. So this is known as the face lift. Uh, and the nice theory uh, of uh, recovery guarantee can be obtained. So in particular, in in in, in this paper, uh, Candice and Lee they just shown that they, they, they have shown that uh, m equals to order of n equations are sufficient for this. Uh, a convex uh, solver to, to, to get the exact solution with high probability if, if this A is random Gaussian. But uh, now the problem here is that the computation is very slow because originally we, 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 we have only n unknowns, but in this nifty that problem, we have n square unknowns, right? So that the, the computation will become very slow because the unknowns becomes uh, unnecessarily large. Then we may also use the non-convex solver to improve the computational efficiency. Uh, the idea is uh, just uh, we, we, we use, uh, we consider least squares fitting to the intensity equations. So, so this is just uh, the, the error of, e of each equation. And then we consider this, uh, this least square error. And then since this is just uh, an, uh, 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 a smooth function, a very smooth function, then we, we may use this uh, uh, gradient distance to, 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 to solve this, uh, this non-convex optimization. Or we can, again, lift this problem to the matrix domain now, but uh, we get this uh, list of squares fitting for the matrix, for the matrix linear equations. But now this Z is not an arbitrary matrix, but just a rank one matrix. So then we, we minimize this uh, uh, least square objective function on the rank one matrix manifold. Uh, now, of course, the, the, the main difficulty here is that uh, all these two optimizations are just uh, non-convex optimizations. So we may have uh, this uh, uh, local minima. We, we may have a possible local minima. Then, uh, in order to, to get a, a global minimal, so what we do is that we, we, we choose a very uh, uh, well-designed initialization, uh, for example, the spectral initialization. After the spectral initialization, usually we will find a solution that is uh, very close to the global minimal. And then around the global minimal, we just use the gradient type algorithms to refine the solution to get the global minimal. The, the advantage of this non-convex optimization is that uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the computation is very fast. So here we have only n unknowns here, though we have uh, n squared unknowns, but uh, we are in this rank one manifold. So they can be parameterized by, by order of n unknowns so that uh, all the computation for this and this, they are very fast. And also uh, there are nice theory of the uh, recovery guarantee. The usually m equals to order of n equations are sufficient uh, for those algorithms uh, to find out the global minimum. But the, all the analysis and the computation are, are local. They, they are all based on the 
the good result of the spectral initialization because of the spectral initialization can give us already a, a solution very close to the to the global minimal. Right? So so then we only need to analyze or do the computation around the the, the, the global mini, minimizer. So so this kind of algorithms actually they are they are kind of local local algorithm and the analysis are just local. Um, Though these uh, uh, non-convex algorithms need a special initialization, uh, special initialization in theory, but uh, uh, if we just uh, uh, initialize them randomly, you will see that they work very, uh, very well in practice. Why this? Why why they works very well in practice? Um, this just remind us to check the non-convex optimization globally, right? Because uh, uh, because uh, a random initialization usually work. So, so globally, there must be struct some structure of this uh, of these uh, non-convex optimizations. So let's just consider a very simple one-dimensional case. So in in one-dimensional case, now this uh, uh, this the square fitting just becomes this simple. Assume our a equals to one. Okay. So then this function it looks like this. This is a non-convex function, of course, but this non-convex function is, uh, is not so bad in the sense that uh, uh, there, uh, all local minima are actually global, right? So here, this is a local minima, it's also a global minima. This is a local minima, but it is also a global minima. And uh, also the func this function is strongly convex in the neighborhood of any global minimizer. So you can see it's, it's a strongly convex here. It is a strongly convex here. And also uh, there, there is an extra uh, critical point here, but this critical point, it is just, uh, it is just unstable. Right? It is just a local max. So, so then therefore any algorithm finding a local minimum will give a global minimum, right? For example, the gradient descent with random initialization, actually it will find a uh, it, it will give a local minimum with, with high probability. So then uh, this, um, uh, uh, though this function is non-convex, but it is still that bad. We, 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 we just need to, to, to apply a, a, a look, a, an algorithm that finding a local minimum, then we are guaranteed to, to, to get a global minimum. Uh, for uh, this is only for 1D, right? For ND, for, for the high dimensional case, actually, uh, Sun Chu and the right, John Wright, they, they, they have a, a result on, on the, on the uh, non-escape analysis of this, of this FZ function. So their result is that uh, if M is larger than CN times log cube N, then with a very high probability, this uh, least square fitting will satisfy. First of all, there is no uh, sparrows local minimal, all local mean are just a global mean. And secondly, uh, this uh, grid, this hashing of this F has a negative eigenvalue if this uh, gradient equals to zero, right? So uh, um, this just means that uh, if, if this Z, if, if a critical point is not the global minimal, it, it is not the local minimal, then it must be a, I mean, it must be a strict saddle. Um, actually, the, uh, the, their result is in the complex case. So the the so so because in the complex complex case, uh, this uh, these two uh, local minimal actually they are I mean which is also the global minimal they are connected, so that we cannot have this very nice uh, strongly convex around the global minimizer thing. Okay. But uh, they, they do have some similar things in the complex case, and I think that their result can be general uh, can be can can show that uh, this uh, uh, this f function is strongly convex uh, uh, around the global minimal when when in the real case. But anyway, the point here is that the sampling complexity this m is order of n log cube, and this one is not optimal. It's not optimal, right? So um, then uh, uh, we 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 are we we tried to to improve their results to 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 O n, but uh, we failed. So the best result we can obtain is only this m equals to order of n log log n. Uh, so 
there is a still a gap to the optimal sampling complexity, right? So there is a still a, a, a gap. So then can, so now there is a natural question, can we uh, modify this, uh, this F such that this uh, M is order of N uh, uh, implies a good landscape of the non-convex optimization? Yeah, actually the answer is yes. So to, to, for, for this purpose, Let's check this. Uh, why this uh, uh, standard least uh, square fitting does not uh, have this optimal sampling complexity? The main reason is it is just because uh, we have the force moment in 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 this objective function, and once the force moment uh, is 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 involved, you can see that uh, uh, of course for most of the for most of the R for most of the equations, you know that this A R transpose X squared is just a, just bounded by, by, by some beta times the norm of X, okay? But, uh, but indeed we have some outlier equations. That is this YR is just a very, very large. When this, when those, this, for these outlier equations, since this YR is very, very large, so that they have a large weight in this summation. Okay? So when they have a large weight in this summation, uh, actually the, uh, these, uh, this, uh, I mean, these outlier equations will, uh, we, uh, I mean, has a too large weight in this summation. So, so, so this destroys the, the nice structure of this non-convex optimization. Now, in order to get a good structure of this non-convex optimization, our idea is that we, we, we just deactivate these outlier equations. We don't use them because the, their numbers, the number of these outlier equations are, is very, very small. So the, 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 these outlier equations are just very, very few, right? So, so then we, we just deactivated them from, uh, from, from, this, uh, from this summation, from this summation. Uh, similar operations, are similar activation scheme is also applied to this uh, A transpose Z. So then we get uh, this uh, activated uh, least squares fitting. So this is the original least squares fitting multiply a uh, zero one function. So if this ratio is very large, then we, we just, uh, this is just uh, zero, right? When this ratio is small, then it is just one. So that, uh, so that uh, uh, it, is, it is guaranteed that uh, this, I mean, this, uh, this YR is just, uh, uh, the, this YR is just uh, bounded by beta times this uh, X two norm squared. So those outlier equation will not be counted in this in, in this least squares error. So, but uh, of course, I want we wanted to get a we want to get a, a smooth optimization. Then we just uh, use a smooth characteristic function to to uh, for for this H. So of course there are many many choices of H. I just give give you one of them. Uh, then now uh, this. We, 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 we can show that when M equals to order of N, indeed this modified, uh, this activated least squares fitting can have a very nice landscape. So here is our result. We first partition the domain into this R1, R2, R3, and zero. So R1, it is just uh, this uh, red, these two pink uh, dots. So they are, they are the, uh, the neighborhood of, of global minimizers. So we show that in this, uh, in this R1, this F tilde function is just a strongly convex. And uh, in this, uh, uh, this R3, it is just uh, this uh, dark green region. So it's, it's, uh, it's the neighborhood of this uh, zero. Okay. So we show that uh, in this dark blue, uh, dark green region, the, the derivative, the, 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 the radio video derivative is just a, a negative. It is just a non-zero so, uh, so that there is no critical point in this R2, R3 region. And also zero is a local max because, uh, because the, 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 I mean, this, this uh, video derivative, they are just negative. And the R2 is just the rest, just this, this is three different colors together is the R2. In this R2, we, we prove that uh, possible critical points uh, comes from only a sub-region. But in that sub-region, the hashing always have, have both negative and the positive eigenvalues. 
Therefore, any critical points in this R3 must be strict subtle. So here is our result. Just assume A is random Gaussian, and uh, then uh, if this M is uh, larger than a constant times N, then with very high probability in R1, the, the, this, uh, this uh, hashing always has, uh, uh, the eigenvalues of this hashing always larger than this, uh, this constant number. And then in R2, the, the, the critical point happens only in this R2 zero, but in this R2 zero, the hashing matrix always have a negative eigenvalue and a positive eigenvalue. And uh, in R3, we always have that this directional derivative is non is non zero is is negative actually right so then we 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 so then we have proved that uh, when m equals to n this activated at least the square fitting to the intensity equations first of all the, the it has no spurious local minima all local minima is just the global and also this function is strongly convex around the global minimizers. And uh, zero is a local max, and any other critical points are strict saddle. Right? So then therefore any algorithm for a local mean will, will give an exact phase retrieval by minimizing the F tilde. Uh, so our results are presented in, in, in this paper. Now, uh, what, what I'm going is uh, we consider this uh, least the squares fitting on the, on the rank one manifold, right? But now this, this, of course, this function is good. This function is a convex function because uh, this is a linear least the square. But now the domain here, M1, this domain is a, is a manifold. It's, it's a non-convex domain, right? So this uh, minimization, this minimize this F on this uh, M1, it is a still a non-convex optimization. Uh, but how about the landscape of this capital FZ on this M1? Why study this? Because the main advantage is that on, on the manifold, there is no equivalent critical points of F on the M1. Uh, there are two consequences. The first of all is that the global minimizers of this uh, capital F on M1 will be unique. Right? This is quite different from, from those uh, non-convex optimizations on the, on, on the RN or CN. Because there we must have, uh, I mean, the, the global the 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 global mini minimizer, the global minimal is is unique, but the global minimizer is non-unique. Okay. So, uh, but now on the manifold, the, the global minimizer will be unique, and this is especially good, especially on, on the C and in the complex case, because on the complex case, the global minimizer of this F little F. It's, it's just a one dimension and connected, right? So then this F cannot be strongly convex around the global minimizers, but this one all can, because it's, uh, it's global minimizer is unique, so that there is a chance that uh, this capital F is strongly convex around the global minimizers. Uh, and practically, uh, more or more importantly, the optimization of this capital F on the manifold is faster than the optimization on this of this little f in, in Rn or Cn. So here are some, some experiment, experiments to demonstrate the algorithms on the manifold. Indeed, it is faster. So anyway, so this is just the, the, the landscape of the, of the intensity equation fitting. So we have some other ways to, to, to solve this phase retrieval problem. Uh, so instead, we can, we can take the square root on both sides of the intensity equation to get the, this, uh, the following amplitude equations. So this uh, AR transpose X, uh, the, the absolute value equals to square root of YR, R equals to one to M, right? So then we just solve this uh, system of uh, uh, amplitude equations. Uh, actually solving the amplitude equations is often faster than the intensity equation. That's, this is observed by many authors in different papers. And to solve this, actually, we can also have the convex solvers and the non-convex solvers. In convex solvers, the main idea is that we relax this, equi this equality to inequality. So, uh, so for this inequality, the, the, the domain that started, uh, I mean, the, the, the X satisfies these inequalities, they are just a, non, a, a, a convex domain, right? It's a convex set. So then we just find some, some, some 
point in this, uh, in, in some solution in this convex set. The usual way that uh, we first uh, define an anchor vector Z0, which serves as an initial guess. And then we just maximize them, the correlation of Z to this Z0, subject to this convex constraint. So this is a convex optimization. Again, the computation in this convex optimization is fast because there are only an unknowns. And also there is a nice theory for the recovery guarantee. M equals to order of N is sufficient for an exact phase retrieval. But the main drawback is that we need a good Z0. So actually the constant here depends on the, depends on this Z0. Okay, so if this Z0 is good enough, of course we get a very small constant, but if this Z0 is not uh, good enough, then I mean, then this uh, constant will be very, very large, right? So in, in, in the extreme case, this constant might be dependent on N, then this ON will not be a real order of N, right? Okay. So, so this is, these are the convex solvers. Uh, we can also go non-convex solvers. So we can, again, we can do a, a, a straightforward least squares fitting to the amplitude equations. And or uh, some other authors may, we may also go, go some other way. That is we first guess a phase. And then once the phase is fixed, once the fixed, once the phase is fixed, which means that I can remove this absolute value now, right? So then this uh, just becomes a, a system of linear equations. Then we just solve this system of linear equations. So we first guess a phase of the amplitude equations and then solve the resulting linear equations. Um, again, uh, because uh, usually, because all those are non-convex optimizations. So then we, in order to find out a, a global minimizer, uh, these algorithms are usually uh, divided into two stages. One is the uh, initialization by spectral initialization, and then the refinement. Actually, this, this non-convex optimization used the, in only the refinement stage. Uh, again, you can see that um, the computation and the analysis of this family of algorithms is also uh, is done locally in the neighborhood of the, of the global minimizers, right? Because uh, the success of all these algorithms actually depending, uh, depends on, uh, depends on the, 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 the good results of the spectral initialization, at least uh, theoretically. So because the spectral initialization can give us a solution that is already very close to this uh, 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 global minimizer, then we use some non-convex optimization to refine the, the, the initialization to get uh, the global minimizer. Uh, so now again, uh, uh, let's, uh, uh, so what, what I'm going to do is that I want to check this, uh, this function G of Z, this non-convex optimization globally. So let's see what what is this uh, what is this uh, this uh, uh, least squares fitting? Uh, so you can see that uh, this least the squares fitting actually it's a piecewise uh, quadratic function. Right? It's a piecewise quadratic function, and uh, when if this G function it is uh, smooth at Z, you can take the Hessian of this matrix. So now you can see that the Hessian is just the A R A R star the summation. So then this one because we have assumed that A is Gaussian, so that this one just very, very close to the identity. So which means that uh, at, the, at most of the point of Z, this G function just has a very perfect uh, Hessian. So that's why amplitude equations based solvers are usually very, very fast. They are usually faster than the uh, uh, intensity uh, based methods. And, uh, and also at the same time, uh, if this G uh, is smooth at a critical point, then the hashing is just uh, uh, SPD, right? So then uh, this, uh, this, uh, this critical point must be a local minimum, right? So, this, uh, so, so, uh, so then uh, this just tells us that uh, uh, this, uh, this G function, it might have um, a local minimum that is not the global minim minimum. Okay. Uh, but if you take the expectation, you will see that the expectation of this G function 
it's, it just looks like this. Actually, this function, you can check that it has a very good landscape. All local minima are just global. Okay. So we are uh, more or less in this situation. So this red line is just the E of G, which is a very good function, has a good landscape. But, but for this G, it's just a piecewise uh, quadratic, so that it has many, many local minima. Right? So then uh, we, 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 can, we, we ask a question, can we modify this G, this G function such that this G function has a good landscape as this expectation of G? Yeah, this is what we are going to do. Our idea is that we do the smoothing. We, we smooth G because this function is non-smooth here, right? So then we just do a smoothing of this, uh, of this G. You can see that uh, uh, we, we use this form. So actually what we, 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 we are not, we're not, uh, we, 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 we didn't uh, smooth this absolute value function directly. Instead, we first transform this, uh, this, uh, this square fitting to this form. We take the ratio of this uh, AR transpose Z and the square root of YR and then take a function phi. So you can see easily that if this uh, phi function equals to the absolute value function, we get exactly the, the G here. It's, it's, it is exactly the same. Uh, now, if we take this G function to this, uh, uh, to this um, uh, truncated absolute value function, and then we apply the gradient descent for this uh, resulting function, actually we get, get the truncated amplitude flow algorithm. Uh, so now what we are going to do is that we just choose our phi to be a smooth function. So we get a smooth approximation to G. So in, so in particular, we choose this phi of G to be this, um, uh, who, it's not, a, because uh, if we choose, uh, if T is large enough, it's just uh, uh, the same as the absolute value. If this T is small, it is just a quadratic function. We just choose this phi of T. So which is a smooth, uh, smooth function if we choose suitable A and B and the alpha. So uh, this is our new uh, G tutor. And the gradient descent for this G tutor, actually, uh, you can check that it is even faster than the truncated amplitude flow. And, uh, uh, and at the same time, the resulting non-convex optimization has a good landscape. So we can prove that uh, this modified, this smoothed uh, uh, intensity, uh, uh, this smoothed amplitude uh, least square has a well-behaved landscape provided that m equals to n with high probability, there is no spurious local minima. All local minima are just global. And secondly, G tutor is strongly convex in the neighborhood of the global minima. And zero is a local maximum. And the hessian at all other critical points have, has both positive and negative eigenvalues. So all these results, they are just similar to the, to the results for, for those uh, for the for the for the least, for the for the for the intensity uh, least squares, so the results are just presented in the preprint. Actually, in in the new preprint, we provided a more smooth uh, amplitude equation fittings with well-behaved landscape. Yeah. So so these these are our results. So now uh, I can conclude my 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 talk. So. First of all, the non-convex optimization is a powerful tool for solving many uh, problems. Uh, though uh, through a non uh, scale analysis, some non-convex optimizations are not as difficult as we suppose in the general case. They have, uh, the, uh, and uh, in, in this talk, uh, various uh, non-convex optimizations in phase retrieval have a good landscape. Not only the in, uh, intensity equation is the squares fitting, but also the amplitude needs uh, the squares fitting. And also uh, a very interesting factor is that uh, uh, this, uh, this phase retrieval model actually can be viewed as an artificial neuron with the activation with this absolute value function or the, uh, un, uh, as, the, as the activation function, right? For the, you just think about this, uh, this intensity equation, right? This intensity, you, you may view that this, this uh, absolute value function as the as the activation function, and the, in the in the in the intensity case, actually sigma t equals to t square, right? So so this just means that our analysis in, in, in this talk actually it is uh, uh, the landscape of training 
only one uh, artificial neuron, right? So can we extend our results to neural network training with training data drawn from the Gaussian, right? So we are considering this, uh, this kind of problem. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's all of my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, uh, Jenfeng, for the very nice talk. So now we welcome questions from our audience. You may unmute yourself and uh, speak directly. Any questions from the audience? Okay, so let me first stop recording.